February 26, 1991, the last great tank battle of the 20th century happens during Desert Storm in the Battle of 73 Easting. Today, we simulate this scenario as it took place with inclement weather conditions, similar Iraqi positioning, and no repairing to see if similar outcomes will happen against 40 Iraqi tanks along with 16 BMP-1s. Against what a few participants can do in M1A1 Abrams, Bradleys, and maybe a couple a 10 Will history repeat itself in a 23-minute time frame it took U.S. to win this battle with zero vehicles lost? Or will the Iraqi side waiting for America's engagement show us something unexpected? Today, we find out. Similar to the Battle of 73 Easting, we fill out a room with 64 participants. It would be 65 just like the real battle since there were 9 reported M1A1 Abrams, but only a max of 64 are allowed in War Thunder's custom battles. Each round lasted 20 to 30 minutes in which we'll go into detail about what happens. Participants on each side have their own Discord chats to discuss strategy and help them communicate to win. However, due to technical difficulties from our members trying to help and record that chat, we weren't able to include the comms in this video. During the first five minutes, six rows of about nine Iraqi vehicles would line up similarly to what I could find research-wise. If positioned on a grid where they didn't have visibility, they were allowed to adjust to help them get that. To increase the realism, we did this in simulator mode and told participants that they weren't allowed to repair as repair time in War Thunder is much quicker than what would be capable in real life. Unless you're on fire, then you could use a fire extinguisher. Let's see if our first set of US participants can achieve victory without any losses in a 23 minute time period. During the preparation for the battle, some Iraqi tanks would be allowed to dig themselves in as they had in a real battle. Seven minutes of prep time has finished as our contestants on the US side and the M1A1 Abrams begin to move up to engage. Score chat on US side announces eyes on Iranian targets about 1500 meters. The important aspect they gave the U.S. an advantage was the use of infrared thermal sight technology through the inclement weather, while the Iranian forces only had the ability to use normal sights. Only two minutes in, and one of the Abrams gets its breach knocked out, only leaving seven that can fire. Four minutes in and U.S. participants chat and decide to advance with still 47 Iraqi vehicles left. Thunder, bushes would cause blind spots to the infrared sights of where some BMP-1s would try and hide, which I'm not sure would have happened in real life. Look at the pictures of the 73 Easting battle, I believe the terrain was a little flatter, which would have provided less cover for our Abrams participants. Minutes in with 29 Iraq vehicles left and only one Abrams cannon down as they keep moving up to close the distance. Use of artillery from Iraqi forces was not allowed as I couldn't find record of any being used from their side. However, US forces were allowed to use them only towards the end of Grit A, as they were in use towards the end of the battle. Twelve minutes in and a second Abrams takes a debilitating hit on its engine. It's amazing.
amazing, given the fact that there was flatter terrain in the actual battle, that not a single Abrams was lost. Can our participants finish the 18 left without losing another? Oops, an Iraqi participant accidentally firing and killing its own teammate. Abrams with damaged cannon moves up on the left in hopes to distract their enemies from the fully functioning ones wanting to move up with seven minutes left. It's now two of the Abrams down. Another getting its breach knocked out trying to provide cover fire from behind. This has been quite a fight. With two minutes left, can US achieve victory in about the same amount of time? victory goes to our US participants that weren't able to make it without any casualties like the real battle, but did achieve it within the 23 minute time frame, just like the real one. What an excellent job. We now move on to round two where we didn't have as many Iraqi participants, now only having 36, and did some rebalancing of dropping one less spot on the US side, while now replacing some Abrams with Bradleys, giving them the use of three each. Let's see if US can still make this happen. It was funny listening to how creative participants would try and get while things like turret rings or their ability to raise or lower their gun was knocked out. And already the first Bradley killed within the first two minutes. That's two being about three and a half minutes in. At the same time, a turret ring on an Abrams gets destroyed. It is still able to make the kill. Trying to move up, but finding himself in a much more open, flatter ground than expecting. First Abrams out and two Bradleys down, the last three are still having to face about 20 left. Could this be too hard for our US team? Take that now two Abrams down. This Iraq participant just decided to drive out, being his breach was knocked out and just useless. Two Bradleys left and one Abrams. Can they still win with eight minutes left?
This is not turning out too good with another Bradley down. The only Abrams has a damaged turret ring, and the Bradley has no anti-tank missiles left while still leaving 11 Iraqi vehicles to go. There was one instance where an Iraqi participant used artillery and knocked an Abrams engine out, but we let him repair it since artillery wasn't allowed to be used. Well, maybe thank goodness this is not all we went in with into the actual battle. This Bradley isn't going to have a chance to survive, now allowing the Iraqi forces to move up with it only being left. Round 2 ending with the US failing their objective, we now move on to our last round where we add two A-10s for air support, only allowing them to use whatever ammo they can carry, and we change the weather conditions to clear as to see how this might change things. By the time our third round happened, many of our participants in Europe had to leave, making this round four Abrams, two Bradleys, and two A-10s against 25 Iraqi vehicles. Let's see how this last round pans out. team had to carefully communicate with their A-10 participants on when air support was needed. I hid this user's user's name as the A-10 should have pulled up a lot sooner but led to a loss of an A-10 that could have really helped out their team in the rest of the battle. through with both Bradleys out, three Abrams left, and one A-10 in the sky, while Iraq has 12 vehicles left. two Abrams left, the US team relies on air support from its A-10 to help knock out targets with the use of its Maverick missiles. Trying to move up, while Iraqi forces were distracted firing at the A-10 and Abrams fails to get the element of surprise. Will US be able to win this last fight?
A-10 taking damage while also missing some of its wing. The participants seem to have issues pulling up in time. Abrams had some go shell issues, leaving the last two Iraqi damage tanks and all of them not being able to kill each other. But because the Abrams would have won and the Iraqi tanks both had damage barrels and breaches, the US forces win the final round. Hope you all enjoyed today's vid. You all stay cool and keep tanking.